Hi, this is your Sapli Bhartia and welcome to another episode of TFR. Let's talk today. We have with us once again, Mohan Atreya, Chief Product Officer at Rafi Systems. Mohan, it's great to have you back on the show. So great to see you again, Swapnil. It's my pleasure. And today we are going to talk about a survey that you folks conducted called the Pulse of Enterprise Platform Teams, Cloud, Kubernetes, and AI. Uh, I, I have a couple of questions here. Before kind of we go into what we found from Sunday, I would like to also understand what is the goal behind this survey? Is it the first time you folks are doing or you have been doing it for a while now? We've been doing uh, surveys of different kinds, uh, but in a similar ilk. Uh, I think the goal behind this survey was to kind of get an appreciation of the challenges that platform teams and organizations face in general, because there's a lot of change happening um, as organizations accelerate their move to either the cloud or containers and Kubernetes, et cetera. So the goal of this survey was to kind of get an insight into what they believe their challenges are um, and uh, kind of use that to inform the rest of the market and our own strategy, our own direction. That was a gentle uh, 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 the direction of the survey uh, and the rationale for the survey. If you look at some of the other surveys that you folks do, and if we look at this survey, uh, what is the first of all difference? And second is what you, you did touch upon the goals, but what are the specific thing that you folks wanted to understand uh, to get a pulse of platform teams? Can you just go a bit deeper into that? The concept of platform teams is, is somewhat newer. It's a few years uh, that it kind of became apparent in the market that uh, platform teams were the way to go, enterprise platform teams. So, and uh, our goal out of this was to kind of understand uh, what exactly were they facing? What challenges are they facing? And we had a hypothesis and, and certain things, certain things were apparent in this, right? Uh, for example, some of the things that were a little bit of a surprise and some were not, not a big surprise. Uh, so for example, as more and more teams use cloud environments or Kubernetes, I mean, you kind of assume that costs are going to go up, right? Um, so what's the big deal? Uh, it's assumed, right? But I think it was, it was very, very um, interesting to see that uh, nearly 50% of them uh, basically said, hey, the visibility into costs, not only that, but also controlling costs uh, and managing them well is a top challenge for them. So clearly there's some budget from uh, the higher levels, uh, budget's a problem, and they're trying to make sure that uh, they don't lose control over the environments and, and the costs. So they want to do that. And it looks like they don't have the easy means to achieve that today. And they're looking for answers to those problems. The other thing that we all seen in the industry, but it was not apparent, was uh, as a central organization doing this for a company, the, the general assumption is, well, they're going to be stretched probably, right? Um, and as we all know, there's a lot of stuff, a lot of moving parts in, in Kubernetes. So the hypothesis was maybe they are stretched. And uh, that came out as well, uh, that they were pretty stretched and they felt overwhelmed in some ways, right? And a lot of this is because they have been unable to set standards. You know, every team is doing its own thing um, and uh, too many snowflake environments. So some way of setting some form of enterprise standards, I think that was apparent for them as a way to manage this effectively with the, the limited headcount that organizations have. But overall, reducing costs and optimizing costs seems like it's a top initiative for these platform teams uh, for the next year at least, and maybe more, when we run this survey again next year, I, I think the pattern may continue uh, as organizations accelerate their move into Kubernetes and clouds. When we talk about cost, when we talk about complexity, uh, we have to also take into account how big or small the teams are. Uh, there are again another round of layoffs happening in the industry. Uh, was there any question which was also related to the team size or if organizations are also kind of either feeling a talent crunch? Ironically, because of all these layoffs, which also means that a lot of companies can now, they do have access to all the talent pool, which was not available to them earlier. So what is the impact of job market condition uh, that you are seeing on platform teams? I think in terms of... Uh organizations finding ways to overcome the challenges, right? Uh, and, and since now they have access to a talent pool, they are an interesting situation. 
But overall, I think the focus that, that we see a lot of these organizations say they, they want to have is, is around how do I make my developers productive? As an example, the lifeblood in terms of like new revenue or protecting your revenue, et cetera, is if, if your application, revenue generating application can provide transformative experiences for your users. So how are you going to make these developers go faster? Um, uh, the things that um, we see constantly um, uh, from the survey and also from um, our customers is how can I automate things like cluster provisioning? Why does it have to take two weeks? Why do I have to, well, why can't I have standardized and automated infrastructure, like click button experiences? Literally, a developer should be able to do this by themselves via self-service. I want a test bed. Why do I have to wait for a week? Why do I have to uh, keep it running 24-7? If I had to shut it down, then I need to provide a way that I can do this via self-service. Automated workflows. I mean, we see this in other industries, like in manufacturing, etc. Automation is the norm. Why can't it be? for Kubernetes and, and all of that. So I mean, overall, I think the way organizations seem to be kind of breaking this down is they look at cost savings, right? If, if a developer can save a bunch of time, I mean, let's maybe do a hypothetical example just for kicks, right? So imagine if you're a team with 100 developers and if let's say the, the average salary is like, you know, I don't know, 150K or something like that. If you can unlock, 10% of the time every year, right? Because you uh, were able to move the needle through this automation, self-service, et cetera. Um, organizations look at that and say, man, that's 20,000 hours of you know, developer time in this particular example. That's a lot of money, right? That's like, you know, at least $1.5 million in, in terms of uh, money. That's a lot of cost savings, which they look at that as productivity gain and, uh, and that makes them look like, okay, I'm going to invest in ways by which you can automate things, automate workflows so that these developers can run faster. So I think the focus is more on empowering the platform teams so that the platform teams can help the larger company move faster. That's kind of what we uh, believe uh, uh, is the opportunity in the market for these, for these organizations. Now, these platform teams who get hired from the larger talent pool now there's, you know, these organizations can leverage the larger pool to do a, a few more interesting things that they haven't been able to do, do before. For example, what if I invested uh, and focused this team on doing things like improving the reliability of my application, the availability of the application? And now, interestingly, in the survey, nearly 58% of the people kind of said, hey, that's going to be a big focus for us uh, next year. Uh, things like how do I make observability work? monitoring work. Why? Because if something goes wrong, my developers can immediately access it. Um, and that kind of connects to the reliability and, and observability. Nearly 50% of the survey people kind of responded to that. We are also seeing some repatriation of, of certain classes of applications happening um, in the form of hybrid cloud or onto a data center, etc., or even multi-cloud. Um, and partly driven by AI, uh, and the lack of GPUs, because most machine learning uh, applications also are Kubernetes based because they are containerized. So as you all know, GPU costs can be out of control in, in many cases. And again, an opportunity for platform teams, the new talent available to help an organization kind of rapidly evolve the organization's ability to go anywhere, including on-prem data centers. So I think this is a great opportunity for these organizations. They also have access to talent now. Um, and if they look at it with the lens of this automation and workflows and cost savings and make sure that they're doing the right thing, it'll be fantastic for the, for the industry. These days, the, one of the hottest of you know, most excited topics that people talk about is Gen AI, which has kind of rekindled people's uh, interest in AI again. Uh, AI, we have been using AI for a long time. Uh, how does, what impact AI and Gen AI has on kind of either the complexity or cost for platform teams? Does it make it easier? Does it make it uh, more complicated? Does it make it cost effective or does it make it more cost, uh, like a cost center? Uh, what kind of challenges teams face when they embrace these technologies? And now the interesting thing 
is uh, the shocking parallels that exist between uh, what people encountered and still encounter with Kubernetes to an extent, extent and uh, how similar they are with what exists with AI and Gen AI. Um, you know, why did I say that, right? Um, if you are a Gen AI developer, uh, you need access to an environment to do your dev work. You can't just do it in a laptop in most cases, right? You need access to an LLM, which is going to be expensive. There's cost issues there. You need a dev environment where you can containerize your app and run it. You probably need expensive GPUs attached to it uh, for fine tuning or RAG or any of these things. Um, so access to a suitable higher end environment, which is beyond the laptop now becomes important. And, uh, uh, now, in this survey they did, uh, there was an interesting interesting uh, question asked in a, in a similar topic, and uh, majority of the response, respondents, they kind of zeroed in on one thing, which is, how do I make sure my AI and Gen AI developers are given the means to move fast? As in, uh, effectively, they're talking about, how can I eliminate the challenges with being able to experiment with AI and Gen AI applications. This is a new space. People don't know exactly what to do yet. They have to experiment. And if I have 100 developers experimenting with Gen AI, uh, or even traditional AI for that matter, how do I give them access to an environment that's cost effective? How do I give it to them in a self-service manner without slowing them down? How do I let them constantly tweak stuff, roll it out um, uh, to production? I mean, kind of is very similar to CI CD, right? How do I do GitOps? How do I do CI CD? I need pipelines for this. I need automation for this. Shockingly similar. Um, so the opportunity for these organizations is, if you look at, again, where they are, less than 25% of them have any minimal level of implementation of MLOps or LLMOps, right? So the larger part of the industry is going to attempt to get there in the next year or two. Um, and, and for them to get there, platform teams are going to be critical because they've been the backbone for these companies to uh, scale, uh, to, to do things in a repeated manner, in a standardized manner. So again, um, uh, we believe platform teams are going to be critical to power these initiatives and make these initiatives successful in a standardized, cost-effective, efficient manner, all wrapped with um, uh, self-service to provide um, a fantastic experience for these developers. Um, so yeah, I think history repeats itself. So we are looking at this and saying, oh my God, this is like deja vu for us. Uh, what happened five years ago with Kubernetes is happening again with, with AI and Gen AI. Now, when it comes to Gen AI, of course, there is a lot of excitement. You mentioned Kubernetes, uh, of course, the Linux kernel is there open, so it's one of the most defining technologies out there. These are proven technologies. Uh, of course, early days are always, you know, kind of, Linux is a different use case because it was like almost 30, 40 years ago, but like Kubernetes or even containers uh, early days, there was a lot of, you know, kind of skepticism was there and then technologies evolve, emerge. When it comes to Gen AI, we are, of course, people were excited. We are still excited. The whole NVIDIA shares, you know, the way they skyrocketed. And then there are reports coming, not reports, but people's opinion that it's another, you know, boom. And it will, you know, uh, and yes, and we are seeing the limitations in, in, in uh, at least in the consumer space, but enterprise space is totally different. We are not tapping into public data. We are tapping into internal data. How, what kind of future you see of Gen AI when you talk to these folks where you're like, yeah, we are in a phase, we are, we don't know what will happen. Or you're like, no, this has become a transformational technology. Or you feel that, ah, I think that bubble is about to burst. What are your thoughts? I think with any new technology, usually the first phase of that is, is usually with the consumer, right? Because especially if you take Gen AI, the first iteration of that was with publicly available data, things on the internet that, that you and I anyway have access to. And uh, what they did with that was take that data and start to demonstrate the kind of transformative experiences that are possible with, uh, with, for the consumer. Now, how is, how is this and will this ever come to the enterprise? I think for the enterprise, the challenge is a slightly different, but um, I think the consumer side is essentially the, the pathfinder for, for this, right? It's showing what is possible 
And I think the, the enterprise side will just follow in maybe a few months, a year or something like that. Why is that? Access to data is, is a big challenge, right? Um, and uh, and the kind of applications that exist for enterprises, they're also different. So let's take a, let's take a hypothetical example. If I want to uh, dramatically transform the performance of, of a sales force, uh, um, you know, the, the sales team, et cetera, most of the data is sitting inside Salesforce, you know, inside a CRM system. How do you unlock this data to do some really interesting things? Now, that data is probably governed. It's probably, you know, compliance is a problem. Regulation is a problem. Um, and uh, all kind of regulations are, are, are things that enterprises have to worry about. So unlocking that has been a challenge. So one of the things that, that we see platform teams wanting to do is how do I give my Gen AI developers access to this enterprise data without kind of impacting these compliance and regulations and all of that? It's not because of lack of use cases, it's because lack of access to data that can power these use cases. So I think we are at the beginnings of that. The consumer side is just showing us what is possible and we see organizations taking those ideas and saying, hey, I could do something transformative, unlock productivity gains, um, significant productivity gains for the enterprise. So I would expect the, the way you and I work with, uh, you know, do our jobs, it's going to be very different in, in a few years. It's probably going to happen a little slower than what we see on the consumer side, but it's coming. It's, uh, uh, you can clearly see it coming. And there'll be some failures along the way to Swapnil, like some of them will not work out. I mean, it's, it's par for the course, um, but uh, I'm hopeful um, that this technology will shape things if we do it right. Uh, now let's try to focus on the solution part. Of course, there's so much to unwrap because there are so many findings from those survey, but if you look at a holistic view, how can organizations overcome these challenges which are related to, of course, Kubernetes, cloud, AI, Gen AI. I mean, we can also throw things like security, but that kind of is already understood, you know. So, so talk, talk about the, the solution part now. So uh, if you recall, one of the big challenges as articulating was that of, you know, costs going out of control. Um, and there's really, I guess, two simple ways that organizations can, can control and manage that. The first one is, um, there's no, uh, there's value in standardization, right? So if, if you make sure that every team is doing things in a, in a consistent standardized manner so that they don't have to land up repeating stuff, uh, there's an efficiency that's built in into that automatically, right? Uh, there's also speed there because if uh, an application team has to get going really quickly, if there is a built-in standard that they can extend and leverage right away, potentially click button and everything is up and I can, I can get going. Um, so that is something that we encourage every platform team to do. And what we have done um, is uh, we actually have packaged everything that people have to do uh, to implement standardization. And uh, you know, we up, you know, interestingly call it the standardization suite for these companies. And we, but what we have done is taken these capabilities and put the lens of optimization and standardization around it. To, make, to demonstrate to these companies um, and our customers that if you do things the following ways, you're effectively achieving some kind of standards across a company, enabling productivity, enabling cost reduction, et cetera. The second thing, which is kind of tightly coupled with this, which is you know, companies can't do this, the, the infinite money not available. They have to demonstrate in the organization that they are managing costs well, right? You gotta be within the budget, et cetera. So to help with that, how do I look at the cost data? How do I, you know, a lot of solutions exist in the market that tell you that you, you're, you know, you are spending a million dollars, five million dollars. And then companies come and say, what am I going to do with it? You're showing me data, you're telling me how we suck, but uh, that's not helpful, right? So how can I help you close the loop? How can I shine a light on some of these things and proactively drive down wastage, eliminate wastage? Um, re for example, Resize applications. How do I resize applications? How do I resize infrastructure? How do I shut down idling infrastructure? If I can do this automatically without people having to get involved, then demonstrate to FinOps teams that we are indeed using things really well. So this solution, you know, the survey shone a light on it. It's a big interest area for companies, uh, for initiatives next year. 
it's something we've been also hearing for a long time. And what we've done is we've packaged that into a set of tools that organizations can take and implement very quickly. We have uh, what we aptly call it a cost optimization suite. It is built with these technologies and workflows that are focused on how do I find wastage? How do I eliminate wastage? And how do I do this on a continuous basis so that you're running as uh, optimally as possible? So this is kind of what we believe, the combination of how do I implement standards and how do I make sure that my costs are optimized? I think this is going to be the superpower for these platform teams, especially I can't believe the kind of pressure they must be under uh, with all these you know, AI ML initiatives, Gen AI initiatives, multiple teams kind of jumping on a Kubernetes um, and everything hinges on the platform teams doing things efficiently um, to make this happen for these customers. So hopefully that kind of covered some of the aspects of Nil. Um, and you folks are also announcing the new cost optimization suite. Talk about that suite and what approach is Rafe is taking to address some of these problems when it comes to platform teams. I'd like to open this with like everything we've done in this suite has actually been based on real customer feedback. And they have kind of taught us that if you do it this way, uh, it'll actually help everybody. So what you're effectively getting from this suite is what market leading companies have taught us and we simply package that into a purposeful experience for the rest of the market, rest of the industry. So what does it do? Um, if you if you break down the capabilities, it does about four or five things in a highly optimized manner. Number one, if you have incorrectly sized infrastructure applications, it will monitor it, find it, right size it, so that you're never over-provisioning either infrastructure or resources for your applications, right? You're just cutting out wastage right there. Next, if you have zombie cloud resources, an example of that is developer spins up a, a test bed and forgets to turn this off. It's running 24 seven, maybe for months until someone finds it and he has wasted, I don't know, thousands of dollars there. What if we can find these zombie resources and put some policies around it so that they are automatically shut down, like a time to live uh, for, for a test bed. Or maybe I'll automatically shut down over a weekend or at nights. I'm saving 50% right there if I do that intelligently. Um, how do I share resources? Uh, you know, not all teams need dedicated resources. So how do I implement things like multi-tenancy? How do I enable sharing in a secure manner? Um, that'll save me money. And then the last thing here as well, we've done all these things. You got to demonstrate and also prove to yourself that you're indeed, um, you know, spending as little money as possible. So how do I track this consumption over time, show it to not just some FinOps team, but the application team, you know, democratize the data. So they also know, hey, we are spending $1,000. If a developer knows they're spending $1,000 and last month was $500, they know they did something different to double the cost. So making sure you have this visibility, not just for some central team, but to the actual application teams, the security teams, compliance team, everybody knows what's the impact of the decisions. I think that's kind of the loop that we're building with this cost suite. So it's kind of summarize, monitor, right size, reduce the wastage by eliminating these zombie, you know, long running things that you just didn't know you had spun up your automated policies, sharing, enable sharing so that, that, that it makes sense. And then finally, report back on that by making it easy for people to understand that they're spending money. This is the general uh, uh, solutions in, in the suite that help customers manage their, their costs effectively. So okay. Hope, hopefully that made sense. Mohan, once again, thank you so much for joining me today and of course share the detailed findings of this survey and also what Rafa is doing to address some of the challenges that we discovered through this survey. Thanks for the great insights and I look forward to talk to you again. Thank you. Well, thank you, thank you Swapnil. And again, always a pleasure and look forward to seeing you again in a few months.